Switching focus to football, after becoming the first Caribbean nation since 1938 to qualify for the knockout stages at any World Cup, the reggae girls will be aiming to create even more history in the coming days. Jamaica will be involved in a two-legged tie to determine the final CONCACAF spot in women's football for the 2024 Paris Olympics, a feat which has never been accomplished by a Caribbean team. Standing in their way are the reigning Olympic gold medalists, Canada, who are not only looking to defend their crown, but also rebound from a disappointing group stage exit at this summer's FIFA Women's World Cup. The first leg will be played later on Friday at the National Stadium in Kingston before heading to Toronto to an already sold out BMO field for the second leg on Tuesday. Joining us to preview the encounter is our in-house football analyst, Lejay Williams. And Lejay, you were at training yesterday, um, first with the reggae girls. I gather the Canadians came through as well. What did you see? I saw a lot of endeavor. Uh, I actually like what I saw. They went through a lot of tactical drills also. So, and I, what I really liked was the camaraderie between the girls. There was a lot of music playing before. They were doing some really fun drills as well. So it wasn't only just hard work. So that's what I really like seeing from them. And it was just really interesting to see how they interact. Although so many of them come from so many different backgrounds. Of course, not all of them come from or were born in Jamaica or have spent majority of their life in Jamaica. So it was really good to see that so many positive interactions from the squad. I gather the Canadians came through as well. Well, actually, they, they, they weren't too friendly to the media, one might say. So they, they did a really quick departure. They just were in and out. So I didn't really get to get a vibe from them, I can say. But I, I know that they're a really quality team. I know what they're going to bring to the table. And I think it's going to be a really good game tonight. Yeah, I don't want to say it's a, it's a sideshow, but it's definitely something for us to pay attention to. I feel as if with the reggae girls, they're is always some off the field issues in build up to, to big matches and big tournaments. And I, I guess one thing to look at um, ahead of these Olympic qualifying matches is that the coach, Lauren Donaldson, is coming towards his tenure. Um, at least his contract is expiring soon. Yeah, apparently the contract is already up and he's just working till the end of these upcoming games because. He and his team signed an extension last September, a one-year extension. So I gather that it's either it's done or it's almost finished, and he's just working until the end. He said that he hasn't quite gotten into negotiations as yet, so let's see what happens there. But I think it would be a huge shock if he or his team isn't involved with the regular girls going forward. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Apart from the fact that he has been successful with this team, as Ricardo reference just now there are some off the field issues which does suggest that there is some tension between Lorne Donaldson and the, the, the JFF hierarchy um, highlighted too by a confrontation that they had on a team bus um, some, mon some months ago and it is generally felt that the players like the coach and the players want the coach but I'm, I'm getting the feeling that the JFF is in two minds about retaining Lorne Donaldson as coach given the kind of, I don't want to say it's acrimonious, that may be a strong term, but I don't think they have seen eye to eye on a lot of issues in the past year. I think it would be a huge misstep for the JFF to get rid of Lorne Donaldson or not renew him. I should say it's obvious, as I mentioned, the camaraderie between the team and the coach, all of the coaching staff really, it wasn't only Lorne Donaldson interacting there, he's, he's always involved in the Jews as well. It's not only the team and him, it's the entire coaching staff that they seem to like. There's a good vibe around the team. So, And not to mention that Jamaica went to the Women's World Cup and probably accomplished the greatest feat in the history of the island in terms of football. So even if you're speaking on a results base, you're not, not looking at the vibe of the team or, the, or what have you, just based on results, there's no reason to get rid of that success unless there are factors behind the scenes that maybe we won't know. But just at face value, I think that it would be, it would be idiotic, idiotic really to 
say that Lord Donaldson will get rid of him. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I, you know, if you were giving if you were giving him a score of one out of ten based on what the team did at the World Cup in New Zealand and and Australia, I don't think you could give him less than a nine. I'd say I don't think I give him less than twenty, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, but, if you compare him, compare him and the Jamaica squad to the squads that we had to face, mm -hmm. people have to remember that we faced two of the powerhouses yes. in football, and we're going to face another one in Canada. But we face Brazil, we, play, we face France, Colombia, our upcoming team, the team who knocked us out, so um, knocked out Jamaica. So I think that there is so much that he did right. I think it would be, yeah, I don't think it would be a good step, and I don't think that would be the step either. I think he will stay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Canada, um, I think given what happened at the World Cup, Jamaica made it to the round of 16, Canada exited at the group stage, there might well be expectations that the Reggae girls can topple this Canadian team. How do you see it? I think Jamaicans maybe need to temper the expectations just a touch. I'm not going to say it's not possible for Jamaica to beat this Canadian team. We have shown that we can either hold out against or beat some really impressive opposition. But we have faced Canada nine times in professional women's football. The aggregate score is 60 to 1. And I, I know that this is not the same reggae girls team that has faced Canada throughout the years. But with that being said, there is still a gap of quality to overcome. Canada is a really quality team. Canada are the 10th ranked team in the world. They have the highest goal scoring in, in all of international football, men and women in Christine Sinclair. They have multiple Chelsea players who have won the FA Premier League for women in England. Yes, we have Khadija Shah. Yes, we have a lot of quality players in Trudy Carter, Jody Brown. We have so many good players in Jamaica, but I think we need to temper it just a bit. And in terms of the Olympic qualifying, in terms of the Gold Cup qualifying, I think Jamaica really are going to have to, it's going to have to be a really big effort, but we have seen that they can do it and I wouldn't be shocked if they pull it off again. Do you expect much of the same in terms of the tactical approach um, during the World Cup? Uh, I think most of the games, maybe with the exception of the Panama game where the reggae girls were on the front foot, um, they spent most of the time defending and, and keeping that defensive shape and stability. Is that what you expect tonight? and trying to catch the Canadians on the counter? Well, I know that the Sportsmark Zone is a world-class show, but I'm just going to hope that the Canadians aren't watching because from what I saw in training yesterday, I saw a lot of defensive drills, the, a, a lot of the same system in terms of what Jamaica were trying to accomplish, staying compact. Uh, I didn't stay around long enough to see the attacking side of what they were trying to do, so I'm not going to say that hopefully there are no Canadians watching and they're not making a phone call. But... <laughs> But uh, I do expect a similar approach. It has to be against a team that is so potent attacking-wise. Not only Christine Sinclair that I mentioned, Jesse Fleming as well. So it's a really potent team attacking-wise. So I think Jamaica are going to have to buckle down. Yes, we're going to be at home. And yes, I do want us to, I do want Jamaica to try and play out more, try and give the crowd, feed into the crowd and give a, a energy. But it's going to be difficult. So I suspect that the game will be won or lost by fine margins. By the way, I don't think you have said anything just now that the Canadians are not expecting <laughs> um, from the reggae girls tonight. I think they, they know fully well, having seen the reggae girls at the World Cup, and um, for the most part, it well, more than for the most part, it is pretty much the same squad. Um, only two or three changes, I yeah. think, from the World Cup squad in this Olympic qualifying squad, but a lot on the line, Lejay, and you spoke about the crowd, which is often referred to as the 12th man. Because it's women's football, Lance, do I say 12th woman? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be in the crowd, so I'm not quite sure if you want to call me that, but I'll be there cheering them on as well. But I know that the Canadians will be expecting Jamaica to be defensive, but maybe in case they saw us in red, so they were assuming that we were switching allegiances. <laughs> but we aren't doing that for sure. But yeah, the crowd is going to be extremely important. It's going to be the first time since the heroics of the Jamaica team that they'll be in front of their home crowd. And just judging off the support that I saw the men get who aren't of the same, um, how can I say this? I'm not going to say quality, but they aren't of the same standing in terms of world football international football wise so the women who have accomplished so much i think they're going to get a lot of love tonight 
and let's see if that can spur them on to get a really positive result. Yeah, two things. Um, obviously, a lot of pressure on the reggae girls to get a result in Kingston because yeah. the BMO field in Toronto is already sold out for Tuesday's second leg. And um, the Canadians will be strong there for sure. I just wonder, too, though, uh, why they selected that as a venue. Because a lot of times when these teams are playing Caribbean teams, they take them to the coldest places in Winnipeg and parts of Alberta and so on where the, the temperatures are, are pretty cold, clearly to make things uncomfortable for, your, for, your, for, your, you, you, for the challenging team. And I don't think Toronto is that cold in September. Are you also suggesting, Lance, that Toronto could feel like home for the reggae girls because a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of Caribbean yeah. people... Yeah, that's part, of, that's part of what I'm saying. In I Toronto. just wondered why they chose that as the venue because we know the football psychology. A lot of times these North American teams play the Caribbean teams. They make sure they take them to some, some climbs it, that it, aren't suitable for them. It, it is amongst the, the biggest, if not the biggest, football ground in Canada. Well, so I, yeah. maybe they were banking on getting as much support yeah. as possible. But that, that is a valid question, Sir Lance. I, I'm not quite sure. As I said, they were, they were very shy to the media, one might say. So I can't answer that question. They must have their reasons. I, 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 but I, 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 I think the crowd yeah. is going to be daunting enough yeah. in their eyes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think shy is the word, though. I, I think they have their game faces on because <laughs> after the disappointment of the World Cup, yeah. the Canadians are, are hugely disappointed, so they want to set things right now. Yeah, yeah. and they definitely cannot afford another disappointment yeah. in this Olympic qualifying campaign. Well, reggae girls taking on Canada. Olympic qualifying action in Kingston later tonight. Also coming up tonight will be CPL. And we're going to be chatting about that in this show later on. And I think a special guest is joining us as well.